picture quality, we can consider a couple of different methods. So subjective picture quality, as implied by the, the name, it's basically our human uh, perception of how good the video is. And typically, uh, subjective um, scoring is done by actually getting a group of people. So sufficiently large group, maybe a couple of dozen people, um, in a controlled environment to view some test material and give their opinion on what the score is. And typically, we use something called a mean opinion score, or MOS, which is a five-point scale as shown here. And basically, the average, the, the mean of those 20 or 30 people who are scoring the content um, computes our mean opinion score. So it's as simple as that. An objective measurement, though, is basically an algorithm, a machine-generated way that tries as best as it can to approximate that subjective value. So a really good objective measurement would be one that has a high degree of correlation with the subjective scores. And that's really the, the target here. Now with picture quality, we've got a, a couple of different ways of making a measurement. Uh, first of all, we'll consider what I call a full reference picture quality measurement. And there's various algorithms in place now that do this. So um, DMOS uh, stands for Differential Mean Opinion Score. Uh, PSNR, uh, uh, Structural Similarity, VMAF, which is the, the Netflix uh, developed measurement. All of these are examples of a full reference measurement. And the key thing about a full reference measurement is you actually have two copies of the material, our original source and the distorted or you know, modified version. And so what we typically do here is uh, make a comparison. And so each of those algorithms is essentially a comparison metric. Um, uses uh, pixel values from both images and it makes a measure of you know, essentially the difference between them. So really it's more of a fidelity measurement than a quality measurement, right? We're not sort of objectively comparing, uh, you know, objectively looking at uh, the quality by itself, but it's more of the difference between them. So in the example here, what if my distorted image is actually better than the original? Um, it's not really distorted, but it's better. That might actually have a low um, objective score because it's, again, different. So it's different in the good way, but, um, you know, so that's why I say it's more of a measure of fidelity than quality. So the, the key uh, thing about a full reference measurement is you need access to both sources, right? They need to be present together. So it makes it impractical for uh, live material where perhaps your monitoring point where you're making the observation, you don't have access to that original material. I would say a full reference measurement is best suited for an in the lab type measurement. And, and in fact, that's what's done a lot of times if we're doing a uh, you know, codec evaluation. How good is my codec in terms of um, you know, reducing the distortion compared to the original? I've got my original, I've got my post encode version, I can compare them together in the lab. So these techniques are often used in that kind of environment. 